Hi, I'm Lady Sam of the Tudor Royalty Experience and Tudor Queen's Wardrobe. I run Tudor Experience Days at Thornbury Castle and as a side thing, I actually make the gowns that they wear, which are historically accurate. Recently, a shop on AliExpress has been using my photographs of commission gowns to sell their costumes. So I thought for fun, I would order one of their costumes to make a com comparison between my gowns and the AliExpress gowns. This one is my gown, which is a rental gown. I use this for the Tudor Royalty Experience Day as opposed to a commission gown, which is slightly different, but slightly better quality than the commission gowns. But I don't have any of those because they've obviously been sent to the customers who've commissioned them from me. But this is used for rental um, for the Tudor Royalty Experience Days. And this delightful item, if you saw the unpackaging, is the AliExpress gown. Now I've done my best. I've, I've got the same underpinnings for both. I have added jewellery, including the same girdle belt for both, um, a, um, a necklace and a brooch. Um, other than that, that's the, that's the only additional bits I've added to this one and this one, of course. First off, I want to show you what a commission stroke rental gown for the Tudor Queen's wardrobe is like. Um, and then I will compare the difference between this and the AliExpress gown. The fabric used in this gown is a very heavy cotton damask which isn't admittedly historically accurate. They would have had silk damasks, wool or linen, but for my purposes, I use cotton because it's hard wearing and, and good quality. It's very heavy, unlike the AliExpress gown, and it's made up of just the, the, the gown part is made up of one, two, three, four pieces. First off, we have the sleeves. The sleeves are actually separate and tie in to the overgang. The pull throughs here are either silk or satin. And again, this is a rental one, not a commission, but these take on average about an entire day to make. This gown has been worn about 20 times this season, so it's been well worn and it's so it's still, I think, looking pretty good for something that's been worn so many times. There's the other sleeve. And I'll take those out. I'll then undress the mannequin to show you what's going on underneath. Oops. And I can't undo the sleeve. There we go. Again, all tied in with ribbons. I'll take the girdle belt off. I've used the same, almost the same jewellery on this gown as I have on the AliExpress gown when I show you later, because I thought it was only fair to do a fair comparison of the two. And if I put all the top quality jewellery on there to make it look better and then the not so good quality on the AliExpress gown, that wouldn't seem fair. So here we here we have these tiny beads here, pearls that look that look would, would have been actually pinned the, the placard to the front of the overgown to cover the lacing. I use pearls here as a representation because as it's a rental gown, I tend to use the Velcro to, um, to fasten it for obviously ease of use and for comfort really. So it doesn't keep coming undone and I don't have to keep pinning my customers all day. So excuse me, all the HA people. Yes, Velcro. And I'll put this here. Here we have the front of the overgown. Again, everything laced. So I also use metal eyelets as opposed to hand sewn eyelets because for use purposes because these gowns are put on and off ladies regularly so it would be quite impractical and I would be I would have to refix the eyelets over and over again because the the lace would actually pull through the the, the sewn eyelets so I will move the over gown to reveal the kirtle there we go whoops doing a little off the shoulder look there this is a kirtle um, this is the supportive part of the gown, which is heavily boned to create the right shape. And the expensive brocades they would have used are only used generally on the bits that are shown. 
on a commission gown I quite often make the entire kirtle out of the same fabric so that the ladies who buy the gowns from me can actually wear the kirtle separately as a ball gown in its own right so as you can see it's quite a lot of fabric and not um, a, a nice gown as short sleeve ball gown in its own right um, the back again would have been used cheaper materials so the bits that were not seen and the more expensive material that would have been seen so this is the kirtle under here I have a bum roll and a farthingale to give the shape because obviously we love the little the Tudor bump at the back um, and so there you go and like this this gown has been worn at least 20 times this season and last season so it shows actually how and it's you know stood up to quite quite a lot of wear next I will actually show you the AliExpress gown and what it's made up of and here we have the AliExpress version I will take off the belt so we can remove it from the mannequin. It is all in one piece and the fabric, although looks very good, is actually extremely very, very thin. It's, I would say, wouldn't stand up to more than about two, maybe three wears because it is so thin. It would pull on the seams and yeah, it's not of the same, it's obviously not lined. I will say the one thing I do like about this is I actually quite like the brocade that they've used at the front here. It's a very nice brocade. It's not the quality again is very thin, but it's actually very pretty, and I, I, I do actually quite like that part of it. Um, I will now remove it. The, the it's not laced. It's basically got a little zipper at the side, which I will undo in a minute and take off. But also I just want to compare. The sleeves again this is a rental one not a commissioned one but you can see the difference in size and the quality of workmanship these sleeves can take an entire day to make the their, their silk or satin pull throughs whereas this is I'll put this sleeve down now this is not quite sure <laughs> but um, again for a costume it's more than passable get under the zip which unfortunately is not very long. I did have trouble getting it on to the mannequin, on, mannequin because it's actually quite short, but I think hopefully it'll come off easier than it went on. So, oh, here we go. As you can see, it is in one piece. It's not many pieces. It's not two gowns in one like this one. It's not boned. It's not got any support whatsoever. Very, very thin inside, but it's a costume. This is the oh, AliExpress jeweling, and this is my jeweling. As you can see, quite the difference. On my thoughts on this, it's a real shame because I'm gonna actually leave a review for the company who used the pictures and copied the gown. It's a real shame because this all told, including delivery, was £130. And when you compare the cost, this is worth £130. And it's a shame if they'd put it on a nice mannequin, dressed it and made it look what it is and photographed it, they would have had no trouble selling. I suppose they'll probably sell more because people would trust that that was what they were getting. And it seems such a shame because, um, yeah, they, they ended up being the best advert for them. If you're going to spend £130 on a gown for Halloween or for dressing up, you know you're not going to do much better than this um so yeah that's all i can say on it really thank you all my buy me a coffee supporters who's enabled me to make this video and to purchase the gown to do the comparison it really is your support is really really appreciated if you'd still like to be involved and like to be in for a chance of actually winning the gown please um see the link below and buy me a coffee and you can, I'll put your name in the hat so that on the 9th of October 2022, I will be drawing the winner and hopefully get the gang to you for Halloween in time to do your Anne Boleyn impression. And I want to see photographs, of course. So in a conclusion, thank you so much for all your support. Also, if there's any video ideas that you may have, please 
put them down in the link in the um, comments below and give me some ideas. I've, I've been thinking about showing you how to make my emergency one hour French hood, which would be useful for those ladies who want to go to the Renaissance Fair and need a hood quickly. I also think of doing other videos of making my gowns, how I go about it and the different processes and different steps. If you'd be interested in something like that, please let me know in the comments below um, and I will say the next video hopefully will be coming out soon. So anyway, thank you again and hopefully see you soon. Okay, bye.